Greetings to you on this eighth Sunday in Pentecost from the prayer chapel of St. Matthew's Church in Glendale, California. Let us open with a word of prayer. Mighty God, sometimes we complain the loudest as we face your loving discipline when all we really want is to do things our own way. Too often we seem as heirs in your kingdom to have forgotten that we must live in a manner true to the master we serve. Forgive us and always lead us back to the true standards you would have us witness in this world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our readings this day speak of the end times. Zephaniah proclaims that the coming of the Lord will be filled with wrath and distress. St. Paul says that the coming of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, and Paul urges us to be awake and sober. Jesus tells the parable of the talents, calling us to use our gifts while we still have time for the greater and common good. In a world filled with violence and despair, we welcome Jesus coming here amongst us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God blesses those people who refuse evil advice and will not follow sinners or join in sneering at God. Instead, the law of the Lord makes them happy, and they think about the law of the Lord day and night. They are like trees growing beside a stream, trees that produce fruit in season and always have leaves. Those people succeed in everything they do. That is not true of those who are evil, because they are like straw blown by the wind. Sinners will not have an excuse on the day of judgment, and they will not have a place with the people of God the Lord protects everyone who follows him, but the wicked follow a road that leads to ruin. God's whole creation groans. The land produces thorns and thistles and is ready for burning. Our sins affect all around us. We confess our sin in penitence and faith. Your righteousness, O God, is like the strong mountains, and your justice like the great deep. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. With you is the well of life, and in your light shall we see light. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. O oh, continue your righteous dealing to those that are true of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are all children of the light and of the day. You are God's children now. In the mercy of God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for Jesus' sake, God forgives you all your sin. With all the faithful in heaven and on earth, rejoice and be glad. Amen. The harvest of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. If the Spirit is the source of our life, let the Spirit also direct our life's course. The peace of Christ and of Christ's Spirit be with you all and also with you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your Spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Be silent. I am the Lord God, and the time is near. I am preparing to sacrifice my people and to invite my guests. I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish those people who sit there unworried while thinking, the Lord will not do anything good or bad. Their possessions will be taken, their homes left in ruins. They will not get to live in the houses they build or drink wine from the grapes in their own vineyards. The great day of the Lord is coming soon, very soon. On that terrible day, fearsome shouts of warriors will be heard everywhere. It will be a time of anger, of trouble and torment, of disaster and destruction, of darkness and despair, of storm clouds and shadows, of trumpet calls and battle cries against fortified cities and mighty fortresses. The Lord warns everyone who has sinned against him, I will strike you blind. Then your blood and your insides will gush out like vomit. Not even your gold or silver can save you on that day when I, the Lord, am angry. My anger will flare up like a furious fire, scorching the earth and everyone on it. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the church in Thessaloniki, the fifth chapter. I do not need to write you about the time or date when all this will happen. You surely know that the Lord's return will be as a thief coming at night. People will think they are safe and secure, but destruction will suddenly strike them like the pains of a woman about to give birth and they will not escape. My dear friends, you do not live in darkness, and so that day will not surprise you like a thief. You belong to the light and live in the day. We do not live in the night or belong to the dark. Others may sleep, but we should stay awake and be alert. People sleep during the night and some even get drunk, but we belong to the day, so we must stay sober and let our faith and love be like a suit of armor. Our firm hope that we will be saved is our helmet. God does not intend to punish us, but wants us to be saved by our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for us so that we could live with him whether we are alive or dead when he comes. That is why you must encourage and help each other just as you are already doing. Here ends the reading.
According to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter, Jesus said, For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I do not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own, at least with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a song from an old Disney cartoon which goes like this. It's what you do with what you got. And never mind just how much you got. It's what you do with what you got that pays off in the end. That is kind of what the parable of the talents is all about. 
Actually, that is what all three of the stories in Matthew chapter 25 are about. The first story, which comes just before today's reading, is about ten virgins, only half of whom were awake to the reality of the approach of the bridegroom. The wise virgins lit their lamps in preparation for the bridegroom. The foolish virgins arose from their sleep, but were not ready when the bridegroom arrived. In other words, they did not really believe the promise of God that the bridegroom would soon appear. Before we can really understand how to use our talents for God, we must first actually have faith in Jesus, the bridegroom whom God has sent. Then, having that faith, we need to use what we have been given to light up the world. It is what we do with what we have got that pays off in the end. The second story, found in today's parable, is the parable of the talents. A wealthy master goes away on a journey, promising to return soon. The master entrusts talents to his stewards, those who are temporarily put in charge of what the master really owns. In the first century, a talent was a weight for measuring silver or gold. For the sake of our discussion, we're just going to keep this easy and say that one talent is about $1,000, two talents is about $2,000, and five talents is about $5,000. In other words, this is a parable about how we use or do not use our resources for God. Like with the ten virgins, the question asked by this parable is, do we believe in the Master, and do we trust the Master's promise that he will return soon? This parable is about investing, investing in the kingdom of God. The steward given five talents, and the steward given two talents, both double what they have been given. The steward with one talent buries his talent. This steward learns the hard way that what you do not use for the master, you lose. In the end, it does not really matter how much you have got but what you do with what you have got, that's what pays off in the end. The third story, which comes just after today's reading, is the story of Judgment Day. In that story, when the king of the universe divides the saved from the lost, the king says, whatever you did, for one of the least of these brothers or sisters of mine you did for me. But whatever you did not do for one of the least of these brothers or sisters of mine, you did not do for me. In other words, the king is watching how we treat others, especially the least of these. What you do with what you have got has eternal consequences. Wake up! Wake up! That was the first thing that Jesus said when Jesus began his earthly ministry. According to St. Mark, the very first sermon that Jesus preached said, Wake up! The time has come! The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the good news. Later, now in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus builds on that initial message and Jesus says, This is your wake-up call. Arise! Let your good works shine. Yes, 
The kingdom of God is at hand. Growing up in the Midwest, one learns the relationship between lightning and thunder. When you see lightning, you know that thunder will soon follow. That is precisely what happens between Jesus' first and second comings. When you see the birth of Jesus in humility to bring to the earth the good news in what is in terms of eternity no time at all, Jesus will appear again at the end of time as our king and as our judge. The time has come. The kingdom is near. It's time to wake up. Rise and let your light shine now. Gert Bahana was an author and a motivational speaker back in the 60s. By her own admission, Gert lived the first decades of her life with more money than she knew how to spend. However, in spiritual terms, Gert was impoverished. Gert had been raised without faith and had no relationship with God whatsoever. Gert had everything, yet Gert had nothing. Truly, Gert's money could not buy Gert happiness. Now, to understand Gert a little better, you should know that Gert's mother was a knockout. Gert, however, was not. Furthermore, Gert's father was a wealthy genius. Gert never even managed to finish college. On top of all that, Gert failed at marriage three times and developed a serious addiction to both alcohol and drugs. Her addiction led her to attempt suicide, which she also failed at, thank God. Waking up in the hospital, Gert's doctor said, you are in very serious trouble with your health, but there is nothing wrong with you. I'm going to send you to a psychiatrist. Doctor, I don't need a psychiatrist. I need God. Gert later reflected, I do not know where that statement came from. I did not mean it, but I said it. Upon her release from the hospital, Gert received an invitation to meet with a group of friends of a friend. Gert's friend explained, they are Christians, Gert, and these Christians have struggled with the same kinds of problems with alcohol and drugs that you have. Now the thought of such a meeting was not particularly appealing to Gert. Nonetheless, she agreed to go, but she got drunk first to help her stomach what was about to come. Gert later said, getting drunk before going, that was not a comment on drunks so much as it is a comment on Christians. Gert was drunk and Gert was testy. These Christians, who were themselves in recovery, they were sober and they were kind. You do have problems, Gert. How about you just turn your problems over to God? Returning home, Gert read a simple pamphlet that the group had given her, a simple pamphlet about becoming a follower of Jesus Christ. Gert explains what happened next. It's hard to describe. It's more like stepping into a shower covered with dirt and coming out clean than anything else with which I can compare it. One minute I was filled with resentments, anger, and hatred. The next, I was a follower of Jesus. I fell to my knees and I tried to think of a prayer. From somewhere deep down in my subconscious, there emerged these words. Our 
Father. And then I thought, if God is my Father, then all of the people in the world are my brothers and sisters. From that initial call to faith, Gert went on to become a celebrated speaker, both for the good news of Jesus Christ and for recovery from addiction. Gert woke up, and Gert spent the rest of her life and most of her fortune proclaiming the good news of her Savior, her Savior who had died so that she might have new life. Yes, Gert woke up. Gert got the meaning of the parable of the talents. And then Gert invested her talents to build the kingdom of God. Gert decided to, in the words of Mother Teresa, do something beautiful for God. In the parable of the talents, Jesus warns us that since we live today in that brief moment between the lightning and the thunder, we need to use the gifts that God has given us to help others come to know the love of Jesus also. We need to bless others as we ourselves have been blessed, as you have done it. To the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you have done it to me. People of God, truly, it is not how much you have got, but what you do with what you have got that pays off in the end. Amen. Jesus in praying for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God of the harvest, sow the seeds of your word throughout the world, that all your children grow into your kingdom. Use our hands to tend your garden wherever it might be. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Listen to the cries of your people, 
waiting patiently for your healing hand and comforting spirit, especially those suffering throughout the world with COVID-19. Ease the sufferings of this present time and fill us with hope. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Teach your way, O God, to St. Matthew's Church. Help us to walk in your truth, grow together in your word, mirror your patience, treat one another with kindness, and sing your praises with undivided hearts. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. God of heaven, you are the first and the last, gathering all those who have gone before us into one. Thank you for your steadfast love and for their faithful witness. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Into your loving hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, and he was ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. seed for us to sow, and bread for us to eat. Make us thankful for what we have received, and do in us those generous things that supply your people's needs, so that all the world may give you thanks and glory. In Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you always. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.